I'd like to show you how to use a Cillin diagram to calculate the pH and concentrations when a solution is in equilibrium with a fixed partial pressure of carbon dioxide. In this example, I'll use a partial pressure of 0 0.5 bar. We also will do this at 298.15 Kelvin, where we know the Henry's Law constant. The diagram is quite different from example 18.5 when the partial pressure of the gas is fixed. Let's proceed through the steps. First we draw the lines for strong acid and strong base on the Cillin diagram. So I'm going to go through this point at minus 7 at a pH of 7. strong acid strong base all right then we write the material balance for this system the molecular carbon dioxide in the liquid phase is related to the partial pressure through the Henry's Law constant. Notice that nothing in this equation has any relation to pH. Because the Henry's Law constant and partial pressure are fixed, that means the activity of dissolved carbon dioxide will also be constant independent of pH. Here I rearrange the relation by multiplying across by the partial pressure. Carbon dioxide is a little different from a lot of other substances because there are two forms of dissolved carbon dioxide. The dominant form is molecular carbon dioxide, but small amounts of carbonic acid are also present. The convention is to combine both forms and, and we call it the total molecular CO2. All the equilibrium relations are based on the total dissolved molecular CO2. This quantity is fixed by the nature of this problem with the fixed partial pressure. If I insert numbers, I find that the total concentration for carbon dioxide is 0 0.0175 molar. I take the logarithm to use in later calculations. That value is minus 1.76. Step 3 of the procedure is to introduce the equilibrium constants. Perhaps the Henry's Law constraint that I used above might be considered an equilibria constraint. It really doesn't matter where you put the calculation. Here I look up the dissociation constants for, CO, for carbonic acid. The first dissociation constant has a pK of 6.351, which represents this equilibrium relation. Because I'm going to create a logarithmic plot, it's easiest to take the logarithm of the equilibrium expression. From the previous slide, I know that the total dissolved carbon dioxide is this fixed constant. This term is the negative of pH, and this term is the negative of the pK. After some minor algebra, this is the relation between the concentration of bicarbonate and pH. Note that the log of the bicarbonate is linear with pH. I simply need two points to draw a line on the Cillin diagram. I just select two pH values that are convenient and determine the coordinates. The line will have a slope of 1. Now I introduce the second dissociation constant, which has a pK of 10.33, and this equilibrium relation. As I did with the first expression, I take the logarithm. The first term is the negative of the pK. This term represents the negative of the pH. The last term is represented by the first dissociation constant that we've determined above. 
Note that when I insert the above relation, the pH will appear twice in the resulting expression. After a little algebra, I get this expression. Note that the log of the carbonate concentration will have a slope of 2 when plotted on the pH diagram. Again, I choose convenient pH values and I tabulate two points to create a line. I expect a slope of 2 and so as I tabulate values I make sure that the slope is correct. For a change in two pH units the log of the carbonate concentration will change by four units. Next I evaluate the charge balance. Here I balance the anions and the cations. Note that the charge for carbonate is minus 2 and so I need a 2 in front. The next step is to draw the diagram. The total molecular CO2 concentration on the log plot is at minus 1.75, so I can put in that line. All right, and this is going to be the molecular carbon dioxide. I've got relations for the bicarbonate at a pH of 2. That value is minus 6.1 and a value of 8 that is minus 0.1. I also have the bicarbonate relation and at a pH of 9 it is minus 0.4 and at a pH of 6 it is minus 6.4. Now, before I go back to the equations, let me look a little bit at the balances that I need to solve. Remember my electroneutrality constraint, or the charge balance? I've got one one cation here, H+, plus, and I've got three anions, this one, this one, and OH. And you'll notice that at any pH values where I've got any possibility of getting equality, the bicarbonate is very much larger than the carbonate, and even so, a lot even more larger than the hydroxide. Okay, so look at this. This is like one, two, three, four orders of magnitude for the carbonate and another at least order of magnitude for the, the hydroxide. Therefore, if we go back, we recognize even with this factor of two, that doubles it, which shifts it up by, by uh, 0.3 units on a log scale. So the only important terms are going to be the hydronium and the bicarbonate. I've drawn the diagram and you can see the proton condition I really don't need to go beyond the charge balance with this particular problem. So the answer is found at a pH of about 4. All right, And those concentrations, my lines are off slightly, it's maybe 4.1 the intersection should have been around uh, maybe 4.1 or so. And this is the dissolved carbon dioxide at that state. And the other species are going to be very negligible. This will be down below 10 to the minus 10th or so, and the same for the hydroxide.